Hi everyone, uh, so I needed a video for this weekend because I was just bored and I thought, hey, what's the quick easy thing to do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the FNAF movie, that whole, like, big thing that happens. And I'm gonna speedrun FNAF roll while I do it, so, yeah. Start a new file. Uh, well, there's no data here, so, okay. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. Hang on, let me, let me, <laughs> let me reload the game. I'm gonna do hard mode. I don't know why I did that. So yeah, uh, we're just generally just speedrunning the game. Um, yeah, we're gonna figure- we're gonna- we're- we're just doing this while I talk. So, uh, yeah, I- I really, really liked the- the FNAF movie. I thought it was just genuinely, like, a really good time. I thought it was genuinely just, like, a fun- a fun game- or a fun game. Fun movie. Uh, though, like, I do have my gripes- my, like, gripes with it generally why oh this is broken i don't know why that's broken but we're not we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna mention that but yeah like i i don't know i genuinely just really really liked the uh the fnaf movie in general and just thought it was a super good time um uh all around I, I, but then again, I'm also, I'm one to really enjoy, like, campy horror movies. Um, like, my favorite horror series is Child's Play, which might, might not be the most appealing thing to people. Uh, considering Chucky in general is just, like, more like a goofy, non-serious sort of horror thing. Like, I, maybe I just like dark comedies, but... <laughs> Um, how the fuck do you get out of here? I've already failed the speedrun, dude. But no, yeah, like, I just, I genuinely, I, I thought it was a super good time. I just had such a blast watching it. Like, I guess just going, like, from, like, different points start to finish. I, I gotta start with the soundtrack, bro. That soundtrack, oh, oh my god, the main theme. Like, look, not, there's not, not every, like, OST number is, a, like, a standout, like, a banger. But man, some of them hit so so unbelievably hard um like i really really loved the opening scene uh shut up fredbear shut up shut up shut up god like the opening in general is just like so great and like i loved the uh, i can't talk while you all are talking you're distracting me shut up if jj put the ass clip up I thought it was such a really, a really fun time. Soul Dozer! Get out of here! Go away! I'm like, my, my brain is like spacing out because the voices are distracting me. Um. I'm gonna wait. Until they stop talking. Okay, I'm good for a bit. Um, but you know, yeah, the soundtrack was amazing. Like, the opening was just so cool. Like, I actually was like soy facing during the opening, the 8-bit minigame showing, like, William luring the kids, it was, like, so, it was so cool, and so fun, like, it wasn't, like, it was, like, it wasn't, like, the greatest, but, like, I was just, like, mmm, like, that image of Superman smelling, like, the, like, evil Superman smelling the kryptonite gas, it's, like, oh my, Mixels, my favorite, like, and, but I still think that probably was more consistent sprite art than, like, the, the first Sonic movie's end credits, uh, Anyways, like, I just, I don't know, like, that opening was so cool, like, the music, the main theme, like, the motif that kind of played throughout the whole movie, the scene of, like, Spring Bonnie, like, walking out of, of, like, the, the hallway, and, like, that song went so crazy. Also, like, the soundtrack when, like, Vanessa's, like, revealing who William is to Mike, like, it's just, ah, oh, it was so, so good. Yeah, like, the characters, the characters in general were, like, really, really fun. I really enjoyed Josh Hutcherson's performance as Mike. Like, I thought he did a good job as, like, the this kind of, like, very, like, reserved guy that, like, was, like, very observant and, like, still, like, kind of defensive. I don't know. He just, like, he, he was very endearing. Abby was super fun. I loved her little, her character. Like, it was both, like, kind of, like, believable enough, but also, like, self-aware to, like, be, like, more than just, like, your average kid character. Um, Vanessa, like, Elizabeth Lale did a really good job. I really liked her character. I really liked Matthew Lillard as, as William Afton. Uh, I don't... Shut up. Go away. Shut up. But yeah, Matthew Lillard in general does a super good job as William. Like, those last scenes of the movie, I, I was just so mad there wasn't more. I wish there was more of him doing his, like, crazy shit. Like, they were all so fun. They were, like, symmetry, my friend, will be burned into my brain forever. Um, but... 
No, yeah, I just, I loved all their performances. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Some of the references were freaking crazy, like, Sparky the dog, like, I'm just happy my boy Shadow Freddy got in the movie, like, I'm so happy he's there. Sparky the dog was such a fun, like, little reference that they, they stuck in there a couple times. His suit is interesting, though, it's, like, nothing like the actual art, it's just, like, some random... Like, I just can't imagine, like, Scott Cawthon trying to, like, info dump to the Jim Henson company, being like, okay, so this is old character run from Tumblr in, like, 2014 called Sparky the Dog. You gotta, like, you gotta, we gotta put this guy in the movie, man. Uh, the Mad Pet cameo was amazing, the, the Corey X Kendrick cameo is great. I, I can't believe Markiplier was supposed to be in the movie, but then, because Iron Lung exists, he couldn't. That was a little sad. Um, the characters are just so much fun, in general, overall. I really like them. I thought that, I, I thought, actually, I, I, I was really... I was really happy that they kept the movie kind of in grounded in the paranormal because, like, FNAF's been very criticized for, like, its sci-fi elements, and I don't- I don't like them either. Like, I'm not a big fan of, like, FNAF sci-fi stuff. I- I, like, it, it just depends, really. It really depends. Like, I like Security Breach era sci-fi because it feels more like it's grounded in realism when it's the future, but then I don't like Sister Location sci-fi because Sister Location sci-fi takes place in the 80s where it just feels super out of place. Uh, comparatively, it, it, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's, it kind of just depends wholly on the situation. That whole thing is just struck as really, like, endearing to me. I thought the paranormal stuff they put in was super good. Uh, you know, like, the dream, the dream stuff was kind of cool. Like, I really liked the way that they did that whole thing. Um, like, it kept it paranormal, but also was able to explore some more, like, stylistic aspects of the series. Um... The tone overall in the movie was pretty good, but it is a little confused, I feel like, because, like, I think, I think the thing is with, like, the critic scores, I kind of understand where a lot of them are coming from when things, like, oh, like, the movie doesn't feel like it, like, feels like FNAF or whatever, because, like, yeah, I know that that's kind of stupid of a sentiment, because FNAF does have, like, a very, like, especially FNAF 1 is definitely a very scary game, and the movie's not really all that scary outside of a couple fleeting moments, but I would describe it more as, like, a drama movie with horror elements rather than just a horror movie. Because, like, again, I wasn't very scared throughout it. I think there's a lot of parts that caught me off guard. And, like, there were some... Like, it does have a lot of very dark themes. Like, especially the stuff with, like, the stuff with, um, Elizabeth. Or not Elizabeth. With Vanessa. Was... I, I was thinking of Elizabeth Lale in my head. Um, the stuff with Vanessa in general was just, like, super cool, and, like, it was so... It was really, really dark. Like, that scene with, like, her, like, show, like saying, like, this is William, he's my father, and, like, Mike noticing, uh, her holding Garrett's plane is just, like, it's so, so dark. And it kept it really... I think it kept that aspect of the tone very well of FNAF. I think the story of the movie in general was super good. I think the story was great. If not a little confused, mostly for like a general audience, but for a FNAF fan, it's perfect. I think it. I think the movie could have done with a longer runtime to help like explain those kinds of things. I like how I'm doing all the levels that have talking in them. That like in my brain, I can't commentate correctly. I where the fuck is the cat? There you are, you asshole. It feels like. The movie's story, I think, was a really good adaptation of FNAF. I like how they kind of, like, with Vanessa and William's character arcs, they kind of, uh, sort of adapted her relationship with Glitchtrap in a way, uh, by making her, like, hit her, like, his, his daughter, and making them, like, have, like, this, like, sort of back and forth between, like, if she's, like, reluctant or if she's, like, following him. Uh, in general, it was just, it was really, it was really fun. I thought the movie's comedy was great. I laughed a good amount of times. I think there's a, there's a lot of Scott Cawthon humor where it's very subtle. And I think, like, it might not be funny to everyone, but it is very funny to me. Um, personally, at least. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's this like, like, I know everyone has been talking about Doug and, like, everyone's like, I love Doug, he's so funny. Like, but... I think, like, if I had to put it on, like, a legitimate level, I think Doug is actually really funny. Like, he's legitimately just a very hilarious character. Mostly just because, like, the little things and the ma mannerisms he has just add a lot to it. Uh, all the characters just have their little moments that are really funny to me. Uh, and I think, and I don't know, I think the movie did a really good job at that part, that aspect of it all. Um, the comedy was good, like I said. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, like, as an adaptation, 
I think the movie does does a really good job keeping sort of the, the spirit of the game series alive. Outside of a couple major glaring issues, which I think are the more unique opinions, so I'm going to talk about that now. Uh, I'd say my two biggest gripes of the movie is one, the movie is not scary. <laughs> Like, at all. Like, there, like I said, there are a couple fleeting moments where it is kind of eerie and, like, very dark and horrifying to think of, but you don't really get scared very much in it. And I think, judging by the fact that Scott said he's listening to criticisms, hopefully that means the sequel is a bit scarier. That was a huge problem for me. And then on top of that, not to mention the, uh, the whole thing with the pacing. The pacing is a little rough, and I definitely understand with how things move forward in the movie and how things are introduced, how critics would be really left in the dark if they're not a fan of FNAF, which, again, I get it. Like, I get, un I understand that, like, for the fans mentality. However, I think they could have still struck that balance between a for the fans thing and for the critics thing, because it's like, I don't think explaining some of the things, like, who William Afton is, or da-da-da, would have been that jarring to just hear, like, a basic rundown of. I don't think that would have been that that hard to do. Personally, anyway. I don't I don't think that would have been super like annoying or like, oh my god, like they're going over like the most basic shit. I I would have been fine of them reintroducing those concepts. Like, I think I felt that with like the body the bodies and the suits thing, if more than anything. Um, so I don't I don't think just like certain ex explanations of smaller concepts would have been horrible. Um and yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like there are certain moments from the first game that I'm just surprised weren't in the movie. Like, why Freddy, like, none of Freddy's iconic stuff, like the laugh or like him doing the power outage were in the first movie. Like, this is this might be a hot take. I think the first kill of the Night Guard should have been Freddy's instead of Foxy's because Foxy does that same attack like literally three times in the movie. So I think it would have been cool instead to have the Night Guard like like, the lights cut off in, like, the, the room while he's struggling, and then Freddy, like, runs up behind him and kills him. I think that would have been a way cooler thing to do instead of what they went with, where it's like, oh, Foxy scares him, like, I think it would have been way cooler if they did that, because then he would have gotten, like, knocked out while the power's out, and then, like, dragged into the little torture chair. I think that would have been super cool, and, like, I didn't even notice that until, like, one of my friends pointed it out, that Freddy's laugh wasn't in the movie at all, which is really weird. At least they bothered putting Foxy's dumb diddly dums in the movie. I thought that Kellen Goff did a pretty good job voicing that, which is really cool. I'm happy Scott like was like, I'll put I'll put one of the voice actors in the movie. We'll we'll let him do Foxy. And Kellen's like been there since the beginning. So well maybe not quite since the beginning. He was introduced to this location. There were there were other guys in this one, but Kellen is easily probably the most recognizable FNAF voice actor, so I I, I guess it only really makes sense uh, for him to be in it. But yeah, I have to come back to the fucking thing. No, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed Kellen's performance as Foxy, that was cool. Uh, that was really neat. I mean, it's a fleeting moment with, like, practically a sound effect, but it's still neat. Um, yeah, the pacing was just really odd in this movie. I think, I, I, I think, I don't know, because this is the thing, this is the thing that confuses me. If this movie was for the fans, why was Scott so afraid to make it longer? Like, there, there is an hour that apparently the original run of the movie before they cut stuff out was about two hours, a little over two hours, and the movie ends up being about an hour forty. Uh, now, like the actual cut we got. So I don't know. It's just like unless the, the deleted scenes really messed with the movie, I don't see what adding more movie does harm to it. Like the average runtime of a movie is about two hours, so like, like every FNAF fan seemed to like enjoy the movie a lot. So it's like would. Maybe not every FNAF fan. Like, every FNAF fan that liked it, enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Like, not- no FNAF fans were really bored with it. It's either they liked it or they didn't like it. Nobody- I don't think anyone was really bored with the movie's length. So I think it would have done better just, like, for everyone that the movie was longer and gave us more time to build tension or, like, add scares or context or, like, anything. Like, I think that would have been very beneficial for the movie, uh, overall. But, yeah, I don't know. I- I find that really odd to me personally that that there's so little like of certain things in the movie uh and like how some stuff wasn't referenced like i i, I think night four would have been i like the dream sequences but i think night four would have been a good opportunity to sort of add mike doing the fnaf thing where he actually like fends off against them and sits and survives because he doesn't really do that at all in the movie and like i'm not saying the whole movie had to be that but it would have been cool if they did add at least like one or two segments where he did it that that is probably my biggest my biggest gripe 
is the pacing, and the horror is a big another thing, but I mean, like, it's not it's not a huge thing to me. I just wish it was a little scarier. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess talking about- this is kind of the thing I was more interested in talking about, because, like, everyone's given their thoughts on the FNAF movie. I was more interested in talking about the sort of, like, the potential for a sequel. I am really excited to see where they go from here, because I think the way they adapted the first game and the, it's a lot of stuff from the games was super well done in this movie, and I think it sets up a lot of potential for sequels and stuff. Uh, first of all, obviously we have to mention uh, FNAF 2. Like, obviously they're probably going to adapt FNAF 2. Like, Emma Tammy, like, had, like, sort of pseudo said that they want to adapt FNAF 2 and all that stuff, and how it's going to be a sequel, not a prequel. And, like, this movie did kind of lock off the whole FNAF 2 being a prequel thing, because, like, just the way the movie movie is, like, set in its world being in the 2000s, and, like, I feel like they kind of, like, they're like, oh, yeah, they got killed a long, long time ago, and the pizzeria has been abandoned for years. Like, it seems like they didn't even, like, really let the window open for FNAF 2 having existed at some point. Also, because, like, William owns the pizzeria, not Henry. Like, Henry doesn't even seem to be present in this universe at all. I don't know if they're gonna do the Mike's dad is Henry thing. I don't even know if Henry's gonna be in this continuity. Because, like, it does seem like they kind of set it up that William was the sole owner of the pizzeria, unless, like, again, Henry shows up somehow. However, that is the whole thing with how, like, Garrett doesn't really... Why did William bother killing Garrett? Nobody really knows. The first five kids make sense. Garrett does not, because Garrett was just a random kid in the forest. Like, William would have had to travel to k get his ass. Um, so, there clearly was some kind of vendetta there. But again, I don't know if it's Henry. Maybe maybe, maybe it's just another guy that he worked with or something. Or, or if Mike dad's Henry, Mike's dad is Henry or something, I have no idea. Um, ow, fuck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, obviously we, it's set, pretty set at the puppets gonna be in the second movie. Maybe it's Garrett, maybe it's Charlie somehow, or maybe it's just like another character, I have no idea. We don't really know. Ever, I think it's pretty confident it's Garrett, considering he goes virtually, like, no one really knows what William did with him, you know? It's just kinda, he's just kinda gone. Which is a bit sad, but... Hopefully that means we'll get some Garrett, maybe the puppet is Garrett, and we'll see more of him. You know, update that FNAF 2. I think the toys and the withers would be cool to see, like, if we see, like, kind of more, like, withers that look more like, uh, the FNAF 1 characters, maybe that would be kind of cool. Uh, that would be fun. Or maybe it'll just be the withered animatronics that are straight from FNAF 2, and it's just, like, it's just a design thing, it's not, like, any consistency. It's, like, you know, knowing that Scott made this for the fans and likely is going to be also making the second movie for the fans, it wouldn't really surprise me if it's just the Withered's one for one and doesn't really bother explaining why they look marginally different. And it's just like, oh, it's just that's just how they look now. I'm kind of ass at Freddy and Space, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get coffee pot right now, which I don't know if it's going to happen. I might be per I don't know if I've missed any of the cupcakes, but I might have them all. I don't know. I loved, like, I love Matthew Lillard in this movie, and I really, really am excited to see him in the sequel. Uh, however, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent. I really hate, uh, like, this has been a big gripe for me for a very, very long time. I really, really hate the way Springtrap has been portrayed in, in a lot of the modern, like, not even just modern games, the old games too. I think after FNAF 3, they kind of Scott kind of butchered the shit out of Springtrap and kind of ruined a lot of what made him special to me as a slasher villain. William Afton's a completely different story. I think Matthew Lillard does a perfect job as William Afton the human. I think that he does great. I think he's perfect. Um, damn it, I did miss one of them. Yeah, I think he does a fantastic job in that sense. However, uh, I don't really love the way they portray him in other other games like i i like and, and this is not to discredit him as a voice actor i think pj haywood does a great job as william afton for the one line he gets him he gets him as is this the okay that is the path to the scary place um i think the one line that pj haywood gets as william afton he does a great job however I don't think he really does a great job in any other sense. I think he sounds stupid in FNAF 6, he sounds stupid in FNAF AR, and I don't, I don't love it. I don't love the way PJ Haywood portrays Springtrap. And it could be a combination of I just don't like the way Springtrap talks, 
in his voice. And I don't even think it's necessarily because he's British. Like, I know everyone like, likes to make fun of him and his, like, phony British accent, but I don't think it's the fact that he's British that's the problem. I just think Peach, like, it's just the fact Springtrap shouldn't talk. He shouldn't talk. I don't think there's any fanon interpretation of his voice that makes me think, oh yeah, that that is that shows me that Springtrap should have a speaking voice and PJ Haywood's accent just makes it sound stupid. I just don't think Springtrap should talk. It makes me wonder, like, if they're gonna choose to make him talk in this movie. Um, I don't know if that's the case. Uh but like it I don't know. It just it really it really makes me wonder what they're gonna do. Because, uh, I don't, I don't know, because, like, for, for, okay, I guess this is the whole thing to start, the whole reason I went on this tangent, if Springtrap's in FNAF 2, I don't want him to talk, but, at the same time, I want Matthew Lillard to have more, more speaking roles, like, speaking point, because I think his acting is great in these movies, so it's, like, this, like, hard place, where it's, like, a rock and a hard place, where, like, I do want him to talk but i don't because i think it ruins the point of springtrap as a character and makes him really stupid and goofy it's like it's why jason doesn't talk like like and that's why like all the slasher villains like the most iconic slasher villains like like freddy or like i'm talking about like freddy krueger and like chucky why they talk it's a comedic thing it's not like oh they're talking and it's menacing it's always portrayed as something kind of goofy and like silly um Whereas with, like, in, like, Michael Myers, for example, like, Michael Myers and Jason, like, those guys are legitimately scary, and it's because they don't talk. And I think Springtrap has that same philosophy, where it's, like, the silent killer makes him infinitely scarier and a lot more threatening. And, like, with Springtrap, it's a special case, because, like, I think with FNAF 3, they imply that William's, like, whole thing is that he's suffering in that suit, but he's still pushing through it all to kill you and, like, get at you and stuff. And I think that's just a super cool way of doing it. Of doing like that traditional horror trope of like a silent killer but that's why he's not talking is because he's suffering constantly i think in a way like i i in a way i think the only way they could have springtrap talking and make it work for me in a way is if they have uh if they have it be like he you can tell he's in physical pain when he's talking and like it kind of ups the crazy a bit I think that's the only way they can make it work. But even then, there are Springtrap fanon voices that do that, and it doesn't st it still doesn't really work for me. Maybe, like, Matthew Lillard can make it work. I don't know. Um, I don't really know. I don't have, like, a concrete concrete way of being able to know that for certain. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think the only real way they could do that is just ha have, it, have him be like that, you know? Uh, but, but besides that, besides this whole portrayal of Springtrap, which, I again, would be one of those two things. Either he doesn't talk, or they talk in a way that he talks in a way that makes it seem like you can tell he's suffering in, in, in like, that context. Okay, so if they don't have him in the second movie, I think it'd be really cool if you got we got some, like, an extensive set of flashback scenes with William. With him, like, doing whatever he does in the past, and, like, killing kids, and we get to see young Vanessa and stuff. Like, I think that would be a super cool way to compromise on that whole idea of like bringing him back for the second one but still saving Springtrap for the third movie because Springtrap really is the perfect final boss character and FNAF 3 really is the final boss game to the original trilogy. Um, I think the movie could do that well too. Uh, but like this is my whole my whole like crackpot idea alongside FNAF 2 we get a subplot of, of Vanessa in her coma and it adapts FNAF 4 and it sort of like is a way to show her like trauma with William like through like her living memories and they could expand on the whole like dream living dreams idea and like memory like memories through dreams and stuff they could expand on that in her coma and make it more like lucid and real um oh what the fuck uh oh my game broke um I don't think I was supposed to uh encounter you yet Hang on, guys. I gotta fix FNAF 4. I gotta load it back up. I think something broke. Right. So I want I want them to adapt FNAF 4 because I just genuinely think that's like that would be a really cool idea because we get to see the nightmares and it would make sense in context of the story. And like Vanessa can sort of like slow. Perhaps maybe William coerce like William in her memory is like coerces her. Am I using that word correctly? She manip he manipulates her into becoming Vanny maybe after after she wakes up from her coma. Or something along those lines. I think that would just generally be a really cool way of adapting adapting FNAF 4. Not only that, but also her transformation into Vanny and all this other stuff. Um Yeah, I just I think that'd be a super a super fun way of doing that. And I think that would work really well. 
Um, aside from that point, having maybe Baby be a part of the FNAF 2 cast, I know this is kind of, this might be like a controversial take, like maybe making Baby a toy animatronic and sort of having her a part, be part of that cast would uh, greatly, I think, enhance the movie in general. Cause like, I think you could introduce Baby, cause like, I think MatPat, didn't he like tease like Baby being technically a part of Abby's character arc in in her like movie? Like whether whether or not it's like being possessing her or like being friends with her or whatever. Like he kinda I think he did kinda subtly tease that. Oh auto gift boxes, fuck, I didn't even know that was here. Right, why am I even in here? I'm not even supposed to be I'm not I'm not even supposed to be here. Uh I don't know why I came in here. I was trying to get to the next area, but I forgot. You don't you gotta do this the tree right next to the boss fight. Yeah, like, I think Baby being being in, in the toy animatronic cast might round them off a bit, and also, like, introduce that, like, introduce that for, for Abby. Maybe it's something, maybe Baby does something in the third movie or whatever that, that, like, sets her off, or, like, continue that character arc with them. I think that would be super cool, uh, in general. Uh, I also think maybe they could go take an approach, uh, getting, so, again, changing topics a little, getting changing to like henry and like maybe henry is like the guy that maybe henry is introduced in the second movie and he's like a, a new guy that like maybe he like uh maybe he's the one that opens the pizzeria or like maybe he opens the fnaf 2 location and like starts the new pizzeria maybe charlie instead of doing like charlie like as garrett is the puppet and they also do as a way to like say like, hey, here's Charlie from the Silver Eyes, like or something. So like, Char like Charlie, like, but she's a little bit closer to her Silver Eyes parents, so she's like a teenager, and she becomes Mike's friend and stuff like that. You never know, really. You never know. I think that that's a really cool thing to do. I think that'd be a really fun way to to like bring her into the series and stuff. Uh, I don't know. There's there's so many different angles they could take a sequel. I think I think it'd be it'd be a lot of fun. One one other thing I want to note. I really hope they don't make Doug into some kind of Reddit meme. Like I like I liked him a lot and I thought he was really funny, but like something scares me like with how Scott Cawthon is with like running with concepts that like he might like be like instead of giving Doug like another two or three scenes just to be in the second movie, maybe he's gonna be like, what if we make him a main character? And then like it's like the whole joke it like I think the whole I think the whole like less is more thing would kinda kinda run dry and like not be nearly as like it would it wouldn't make Doug nearly as fun as a character of, of the character in my eyes. But yeah. What the fuck? Why'd the buzzsaw not do nothing? There we go. Bro blocked it. I think that the general the sequel the sequel just like has so much different like little potential things. I can't it's the little maze up here, right? I think you're supposed to go into. Fuck off, Flan! It's gloom, so or seaweed. That's your name. Guys, I'm gonna be real. I'm I thought I was gonna beat I might have been able to beat this game a little faster. I, I'm struggling. I'm starting to run out of things to talk about. Um Alright, let's just talk about general FNAF stuff. Uh sorry for never uploading the rest of my room playthrough. Uh, the first part didn't really get that many views, so I was like and I gotta upload the rest of that. <laughs> it might be a little disappointing, I apologize, but, uh... I just, I, I thought that, like, it wasn't really worth it, because I didn't think that many people really cared. But yeah, Ruin was super fun. I really liked it. I can, I can start, I, I, I got it, I'll start ranting about FNAF lore that I, that I, I believe. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the Mimic and Glitch Trap, because I think this like, misconception really pisses me off about these characters. And like, so, so there's this, there's two crowds, right? There's one crowd that believes that the Mimic and Glitch Trap are the same thing, and like, everything relating to the Mimic entity-wise is all the Mimic, and it's all him, and it's all him doing it, right? I don't think that. I think that Glitch Trap is a byproduct of, of fucking, of the Mimic subroutines and shit, but not exactly him. Like, like, uh, I don't think that he, he did, he did all that. Okay, this is let's set up the scenario here. So after FNAF 6, Faz Entertainment does his own little does his own little little shindig, does his own little thing, right? Quirky little like, oh, we're gonna make our little VR game, and it's hi hires a studio to do it, and it's like, hey, why don't we use this like like we got uh, we gotta make a really advanced AI for the game? Let's use this old old mimic robot and old mimic program to to develop it. We can like use the old chips from the old robots, and like we can make it look like authentic and real. So 
that's what they do, right? And then it's, uh oh, we accidentally scanned Springtrap into it, and now Afton is back, and it's Glitch Trap. And so technically, it is the mimic, but it's a mimic of Afton. So it's not just the mimic. Like the, the mimic, Endo Skeleton, and Glitch Trap are two entirely different characters, at least to me. At least to me, that's how it feels. Uh, I don't. Where am I going? I feel like I've like lost the plot here. Where do I go? I don't remember what to do in this game, dog. But like, yeah, I just, I genuinely think that that, that's just, that just feels like between that and like the AR emails, that just feels more like what is the real case when it comes to the character. Like, I don't think that the mimic is, is every single related character to him. Like, I think that they are two separate characters that do two separate things. Um. But like, yeah, like, I don't know. I want, I want, I like Glitch Trap and I like the mimic. And not to mention, it seems pretty clear that Glitch Trap is defeated after the princess quest ending. Like you see like a silhouette on the wall and all this like destroyed stuff, the, 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 um, the sword through the arcade. Like if the, if Glitch Trap was just a puppet that the mimic like used, why, like what is the mimic's goal? Like. I think that kind of defeats the entire point of Glitch Trap having a motive if you just make in the Mimic, because then it's like, what was the Mimic's goal at the end of the day? Like, what was his plan there? Clearly the Mimic was freed in a way underground at some point, because Gregory and Vanessa have to go back underground after to steal him. So if he was already freed, what was the point of doing all the stuff as Glitch Trap and not, like, why wasn't, like, prime objective numero uno to get out of the ground? I personally think when it comes to the Burn Trap ending, like, Burn Trap is, is, like, if, if Afton and Glitch Trap aren't this, or excuse me, if Glitch Trap and the Mimic aren't the same character, right? They are two totally separate entities from one another. They have different motives. Like the Mimic, the Mimic wants to just get out of the underground, and Glitch Trap wants to mimic William Afton, right? Both of them have their separate motives. I legitimately forgot what you're supposed to do next in this game. Like I, like how do I get in the graveyard? I might have to like Google this shit. FNAF World Lily Gear Lake Glitch Object. Where is it at? Oh, it's there. Oh, hey, new challenger. Hi, Shadow Freddy. My guy, my boy. I found it in the in the in the video. Sorry, guys. I had to take a tutorial break. Um. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, if they're two totally separate entities, like, I think that if Glitch Trap's goal- So, Glitch Trap wants a body to be able to be Spring Trap again, or to be something like that. So, like, it, like, Glitch Trap makes Vanessa go down to the mysterious little pizza place and steal the Mimic's body to become Burn Trap. And, like, he possesses the suit, and that's why his eyes are purple, and, like, he has, like, the suit parts and stuff. And, like, that is his whole- his whole shtick down there. Like, that's why he's doing all that stuff, is because- he wants to he wants to have a body however mr mr mimic uh gets taken over and then he gets killed by the blob uh but this is the little secret decret is that since princess quest happens and glitch trap never uh gets to the mimic the mimic is still down there and so vanessa and gregory develop the nexus program with glitch traps leftover code and uses that to to sort of like keep him down there because uh obviously mex is within the vanny mask and the vanny mask is something that vanessa made because like who the fuck else is gonna make that besides her we already know from the emails that she was the head technician or the head like technician and like developer of the fazbear virtual experience like he she was the head she was the lead guy that's why she went and tried to flush glitch trap out it's, it's like a whole operation and shit like no but everyone ignores those emails but i feel like they're very crucial to like solving solving what like vanessa's motivations are and like how glitch trap gets to the pizza plex and stuff and like her character completely is surrounded by those emails like and everyone just kind of ignores them and it makes me sad yeah like i think that's kind of the whole thing there is that like it did that and by the way mex is the entity whatever i think it's pretty clear that he's glitch trapped to me because like he does that he has the same mannerisms he does the same stuff that 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 glitch trap does like that is a sort of recoded glitch trap like when you encounter him he sends the animatronics after you like it's it's essentially just repurposing glitch traps code into a security protocol system that sticks the animatronics on you 
and that's why like he still is like has malicious intent or whatever and it was never really intended to be like it's like it's not like they like they're like oh cassie like i'm sorry that like you had to go through all that like it, it, it that was more meant for like burglars and like bad people like cassie wasn't a bad person she was she just was a good person trying to do a good thing but got tricked by the mimic uh to go down there but yeah there's me ranting about that i think it's just a generally th i think that generally really, really makes you mad about about them about the mimic and all that in self-encompassing stuff i'm trying to think of like any other like lore tidbits i want to rant about um <laughs> Should I save up for the big guy? Nah. Um, but yeah, Ruin was cool. <laughs> I thought it was, like, scary. I thought it was good. Like, I was happy that it was returning to form. I think Steel World... Steel World is a lot better when they're at a more limited scope and a more make create more linear experiences rather than just trying to do, like, the same old, like, oh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this and this and, like, oh, we gotta make this huge-ass world and environment, but, like, it ends up not really being super effective because it's just... It's too big in scale to have enough little details to make it scarier, and I think Ruin does a good job balancing that. Even if it still has its problems, I think it's still a good step in the right direction. And Steel Wool is special with, like, they're very good at making VR games, and, like, FNAF VR is still my favorite game, and, like... Okay, FNAF 3 is my favorite game, subjectively. Objectively, FNAF VR is my favorite game, and I think Help Wanted 2 looks super promising so far. I'm wondering where the hell the news is about it. Because, like, they haven't talked about it at all. Like, where is that, guys? Like, come on. It's, like, it's been, like... I don't know how long it's been, but it's been long enough. Y'all gotta, gotta drop that. We're missing that. We need that stuff right now. I need that in my life. I would really like a gift box this character for the final boss since I get to it. But, I don't know. Let me see if that, that happens. Um... Um... Blah, 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 blah from FNAF World! Oh yeah, we can talk about that click team game now. Um, oh my god, that game looks so cool. I'm I'm really excited for that. Like the lol bit thing looks really neat. Um, this is a little weren't scary. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? Um, yeah, like I'm I'm really really excited to see to see like what that whole click team game is and like what's the whole like what's the whole dealio with that? Cause it looks super interesting. I don't know what happened, bro. Bubba, Bubba's scary, bro. What happened? Why Bubba so hard to fight, dude? Um, come on, guys, come on, we can do this. We got this, guys. We got this. Fuck. Okay, well I'm dead. Um, we done some. This is a stinker. Perhaps I should. Perhaps I should. Uh, I should invest in grinding out a gift boxes, guy. Cause I kind of, I kind of need one of those. I can, I can, uh, I'm gonna try fishing real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Ah! Ah, ah fuck! Damn it. I'm sad now. I'll try getting the dang pearl so I can get the... Ah! Yeah! <laughs> I got it. I'm so good at this game, dude. I'm so good. Now I can go to you. Give me the... the oh, wait. It was 250. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, I clicked team. What were we talking about? That? <laughs> we were talking about that. Um, Yeah, like, I don't know. The Lulbit thing was interesting. There's, like, that weird teaser video. There's, like, the Freddy poster. Like, I don't know what the hell they're making. Like, maybe the, maybe maybe Scott Cawthon, like, called them up and were like, Hey, uh, I need a new FNAF Plus because FizzNom's gotten booted out. We need to, I need y'all to make a new Fizz FNAF Plus game. Um, and that's why they're doing it, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's it. I doubt it though. Maybe it's just them being funny and making a goofy little game. Uh, we do know it's it's Unreal Engine FNAF game, which is really funny that Click Team is making an Unreal Engine FNAF game. Like, just that feels really backwards to me. But they are in fact making an Unreal Engine FNAF game because they're looking for Unreal Engine and like assistance, like help help with people that specialize in Unreal Engine. Uh, which is just fascinating to me, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's for a good reason. Um, but yeah, like 
I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll be good. I don't know. It seems like it seems pretty pretty interesting to me. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe if I do this at all, I can I can fight this guy way easier. Give this a shot. That's a red bear. That's not what I wanted. Fanverse stuff is cool. Uh, we can talk about that. I really like the fanverse. I think that it's a generally a really. Also, I think I just realized. I think I should have been using Jackal Bomb this whole time instead of Buzzsaw. I'm pretty sure that move is better. I think this does more damage. I think that does significantly more damage. I don't know why I haven't been using that until now. Will one of those hit? Maybe one day. Um. Yeah, I uh, I just genuinely think that um, that whole thing is super cool. I'm excited for the future of FNAF. This is like easily the big, the busiest FNAF year like that we've ever gotten, which is just crazy to me. It's like I didn't think it could get any bigger than like 2015. I mean, we got the movie, we got Ruin, we got the Click Team games on the way, we got Help Wanted 2, we got whatever Steel Wolves is gonna do after that, uh, we got the Fanverse stuff, we got like whole three, three whole ass Fanverse games still coming out, guys, like, come on, like, and they all look pretty cool, well, okay, I can't say they all look pretty cool, we have seen, like, basically nothing of Candy Sore, but, I mean, Evergreen looks neat, and I'm excited for Ignited Collection, that looks cool, like, we've got an actual gameplay footage of that, and apparently it's supposed to be, like, a demo out by the end of the year, which is, like, hell yeah, I mean, I'm excited to play that, that looks cool. Um, there's just so much FNAF stuff happening, man. It's crazy. I'm very excited for the future of Mr. Freddy T. Fazbear. I'm just trying to get this over with at this point. <laughs> I'm so close to beating it, guys. I'm so close. Fuck, did I just go in a circle? I think I did. Damn it. I don't, I don't know where am I supposed to go, guys. Help me. Was there a, is there a thing up here? I just don't know. What about up here? Have I have I gone up here yet? I haven't. I don't think. Yeah, there we go. I got it. We're good now. That's the tree that leads to the bad ending. I don't want to go there. I mean, I could do that. It is technically a method of getting an ending, and I am kind of out of things to talk about but i feel like this is kind of anticlimactic if i don't kill scott cawthon all right fine i'll kill scott cawthon just for you guys just for you guys oh man that's so much game <laughs> there's still so much game left uh, i guess i'll do it bye there we go kill you haha kill you or no you fucker Okay, um... I can defeat the man that tried to create the FNAF movie. I'm trying to do that, the loser. Imagine being the guy that made the FNAF movie, ugh. Really still cough and cut, bro. I wanna see Hank get cut in half. Oh yeah, I could talk about all the cut content from the movie. I guess that's the thing I can talk about. There's a lot cut from this movie. I know there was like a whole scene where like Golden Freddy jump scaring Aunt Jane. That was that would have been kind of cool to see. Uh, if I don't know, maybe 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 I'm wrong. Maybe that would have been stupid, but I think it would have been cool personally. Oh shit! Hey, baby girl, can you can you come back? I need to I need to fourth wall him again. There we go. I got this now. Get him, Freddles. All right, get him, Chica. Yeah, you good girl, you did it. You're so awesome. It would be so awesome. <laughs> it would be so cool. It would be the most incredible superhero movie. The w I'm gonna get a copyright strike if I keep singing that. I probably shouldn't just keep singing that. Damn it. Why? Why is YouTube so mean? Why don't they let me have fun? I wanna have fun with my fucking little dumb songs, my little silly bits. I can't do that with YouTube being stupid. Yeah, like, there's a lot of, like, Fazbear Frights level gore writing in the old scripts, and it's a little scary, all things considered, because, like, I can't imagine the FNAF movie with all that, I'm not gonna lie. That, that probably wouldn't have gone over well. I mean, maybe it could have been a little bit scarier than what we got, but... I died pretty bad there. Um, maybe it could have been a little bit scarier than what we got, but I don't know, man. 
it feels a little, a little get silly goofy to me. I don't know why, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're a little weird. I'm gonna try getting some Pinwheel Circus motherfuckers real quick. Wait, I'm missing one more key. Wait, did I get the- did I not save? No, I did. What, what other- because like, this is Mad Endo. I don't remember what other buttons there are. I'm try- I need to get like, Funtime Foxy or something. Or like, the Crying Child, because like... Oh, wait, please, maybe? Damn it. You're not who I wanted. You're not who I expected to see. I guess I can go to the metal mine and do that real fast. That'd be a pretty good way of getting getting another character, getting more characters. Would just be to go find the tank ship. Oh, hey, my other character. Where did she go? I don't know. FNAF movie, dude. You did scenes. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know. I think that, especially like I said, the pacing of the movie could have been could have been better. I think that that would have contributed to it being a lot less rushed in general. Can you tell I'm drifting off here? I'm losing focus, man. I can't keep talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. I've been here for like a lot longer than I thought I was going to be. I'm not going to lie. I forgot how long this game is. Um, I wonder I could hit that on Scott Coffin and probably kill him. I doubt I will, but it'd be really funny if I did. Oh my god, why are these bosses so difficult? I don't remember it being this hard. Oh my god. Please. Dang it. Unscrew. Get him. Damn it. Uh, I don't remember that being this hard. I don't know, I guess maybe I should just grind for fucking Funtime Foxy. I can get XP from you. Nah, I need that fine character chip. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna make this anticlimactic, because I don't feel like keep playing this game anymore. I don't want to play this game anymore. We're just gonna get the old man consequences ending, and we're gonna leave it at that, because I'm tired of FNAF World. I've run out of things to talk about. I'm tired of it. I don't want to play it anymore. And I... Fucking hell, my god. If... FNAF World Run Button work. Don't, I guess. I don't know. I'm not allowed to have fun anymore. I'm not allowed to do any of that. No, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play FNAF World and fight the guys. And they're too hard for me to fight. I can't speedrun properly because I'm, I'm bad at video games. And the game doesn't want to give me any of the gift box characters. Unless I was gonna, I was hoping maybe it would have done like new challenger approaching and then fun type boxy appear. Look, guys, like it's fun type boxy. Whoa! I can beat the game now. Oh, look, it's, it's me and my little party fighting Scott Coffin. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, we did it. We did it, team. We did it. Now I, the video's over. Oh, dang it. That was a dream. And I'm back here. I'm fighting Bubba. You're not Scott Coffin. You're not who I expected to see. You're not who I expected to see. Uh, if I could just hit one of those, that'd be nice. Get him, Jacko Chica. Sick him, boys. Alright. We did it. We beat Bubba for the second time now. Oh, who <gasps> Funtime Foxy? Aw, uh, you're not Funtime. You're the inferior, the more inferior of the two. Actually, in, 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 in reality, you're not. I like J Nightmare Chica more than Jacko Chica, but, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna pretend that I don't, because she has better to attack. Guys, actually, uh, Nightmare Chica's worse, because, uh, Jacko Chica is better for now for all the attacks, so I think she goes in a, uh, A tier, um, instead of Nightmare Chica, who goes in a B tier. Um, yeah, so... Stupid, that's what I think of the finest phrase. And if you disagree with me, then you are a bad person and I don't like you. That is my FNAF tier list, guys. Um, hope you all had a good day and I think I love you. I'm gonna give you a big kiss. <sighs> Fuck you, I don't want to talk to you. Get me out of here, it's round. <laughs> I always knew your weakness was water. When do I see God again?
I don't remember. Like a whole like three minutes. Fuck that. Put the visual on screen. <gasps> it's God. It's God. Oh, he's taking me to. Oh, he's gonna play Fighters of Freddy's Two for me. Oh, this movie's so awesome. Holy shit! It's the mimic. Ah, oh, 